Eh, yeah, see, I am gonna marry this broad, see, but I kinda hate her guts, see, but I gotta marry her because, see, she saw me commit a crime, see? Brighton Rock? Released in 1948 and is directed by John Bolting, who is also behind such films like Journey Together, The Magic Box, Lucky Jim, and I'm Alright Jack. And this film is starring Richard Attenborough, Hermione Baddeley, William Hartnell, and Carol Marsh. And the reason why we're discussing Brighton Rock today is because it was a PayPal recommendation slash donation from one of my biggest contributors on this channel, Autumn Blood. You send me the most obscure things that I've never even heard of before, and I greatly appreciate it. This movie, again, I have never seen Richard Attenborough young before. The only thing I've seen him in is the Jurassic Park films, and more recently with Great Escape, which was a big shocker to me because he wasn't gray and white all over his face. He was younger. Here, he's even younger still. So if any of you out there also want to be like Autumn Blood and donate to this channel, you can make a PayPal donation by clicking on the donate button on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. And if you have a movie that you really want me to review and give you a shout out for on this channel, you can attach your movie with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and publish my review of it as quickly as I possibly can for you. Richard Attenborough plays Pinky Brown, who is the leader of a small-time gang in this lovely little town called Brighton Rock. And he's cutting deals and making killings, all for the advancement of his little gang. And one day he gets caught trying to cover up a murder that he committed by a lovely waitress named Rose. And the two seemed infatuated with each other and start dating. However, it's further realized that Pinky is only marrying her because she knows information and he's looking to kill her. So the whole movie becomes a godfather-like-ish story with Pinky trying to control all of the crime in Brighton Rock. First off, this character, Pinky Brown, is one sick son of a bitch. He's a psychopath. Why would anyone align themselves with this guy? And I say guy because to me, he seemed like an adult, like an, a younger adult, maybe in his mid to late 20s. But I guess Richard Attenborough is supposed to be a teenager in this movie, which I don't know how young he was at the time this movie was being filmed, but he is not giving me teenager vibes, which I guess explains the whole conundrum that he had with his lawyer trying to figure out how he can go about marrying Rose. Well, we're too young, you see. We need to have permission. Maybe we could just do it by accident, see? Yeah, not getting teenager vibes from them, sorry. But talk about a character that's a precursor to a lot of the serial killer performances that we get in present day. This Pinky character is sick and he's calculated and I think he's scarier because he doesn't really move or talk or blink. He kind of just sits there or stands there staring at you and if you say even the slightest thing out of place, you can see his brain start going and figuring out, oh, they said something wrong or they know too much, I gotta take care of them. And I'm serious, I watch this character doesn't blink. And that's scarier to me. How great would my movie reviews be if I just did them like this, never blinking and speaking very softly and very monotone? Do you think I would be increasing my subscriber count? Hmm? Yeah, I didn't think so. But this movie is marketed all around Richard Attenborough's performance, which is amazing. It is fantastic. He puts everyone else in this movie to shame. Even though I like Carol Marsh's portrayal of this character Rose, who is just so in love with this character, Pinky will do anything for him and, and knows that he is a terrible guy. But she doesn't care. It's like she's a werewolf and she is imprinted on Pinky and can never leave his side ever again, regardless of what he does and the crimes he commits. Now it's the 1940s, so the portrayal of women in this movie, in particular Rose, is not the best, in that she doesn't really have a mind for herself. It's all about what Pinky wants, and what Pinky wants, Pinky gets. What a great gangster name that is, Pinky. I mean, was Pinky in the brain? Was this like a tribute to Pinky from this movie? It has to be. Who else was called Pinky over the years? But it even comes down to one point where Pinky is trying to convince Rose to enter a suicide pact with them. You see? Because he's gonna be found out. See? Which I guess that doesn't really make sense with how that happens. I love these early movies when it comes to cops and detectives and just the court of law and things like that because it gives you a perspective of how law enforcement, or at least the realization of what they do, how that has just 
come leaps and bounds from where it was. So there's this character, Ida, played by Hermione Badley, who was an acquaintance of this reporter that ended up being killed early on in the movie. And it's her mission, it's her overall character arc in trying to bring down the person who killed her friend that she met once very briefly. And she knows it's Pinky, so she goes around interviewing people and talking to people. And then if someone, like, slips a little bit of information, she goes, Ha! See? You made a mistake! He's the one who killed her! I'm gonna go tell the cops! And then she tells the cops, and then the cops ask the other person, they're like, no, I never said that. And she goes, well, no, you did! And that was the evidence that she was trying to present to the police. <laughs> he said, she said, it's, yeah. That totally holds up. Excuse me, officer, he said that he did it. Um, excuse me, officer, uh, I did not. Yes, you did, I heard it. That was the basis of your argument. I heard them say it. And because I heard them, you need to take down this guy. Wow, I wish I could have been on the jury for that one. Small little spoiler for what I'm about to get into for this film that is 80 years old, but you know, spoiler alert. And that even brings us to the climax of this movie where people think that Pinky is taking Rose off to kill her, and the other people realize it, so they call the cops and they go searching for them. And once they find Pinky, no one's been killed, no one's been shot, but he's so freaked out that the cops are there and they're accusing him of something that he's so scared that he falls back and into the ocean. And I guess my modern day sensibilities is like, why? Do you know how the court system works? You are innocent until proven guilty. If they're coming after you because they think that you're going to kill Rose, Rose is not dead, and you didn't harm her in any way, so they can't, they can't do anything to you. They can do literally nothing! So why are you so scared that you fall back over the fence and die? I, I just, I don't know. I think that's my biggest complaint about this movie, is that I don't think these characters who are in this gang, who have a lawyer, by the way, there are scenes where they're talking about, oh, well, I killed so-and-so, so you need to cover it up and give me an alibi, and I was never here. None of these characters, including the lawyer, I don't think knows how the law works. You can't arrest someone for a crime that they have not committed. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm still held up about the ending of this movie. Up until the ending, though, I'm loving this thing, and I'm loving seeing the performance of Richard Attenborough as Panky. He's sick, he's cold, he says language in here that I didn't know that they allowed in films back in the 40s. It's a little risque for nowadays. But other than the ending, I did have a really good time with this movie, and I thank you, Autumn Blood, for the recommendation. This was quite a treat. Richard Attenborough, very young, not teenager young, but seeing him very young in this movie, it was it was a blast. Thank you. I'm gonna give Brighton Rock three and a half out of five Blu-rays. I am above average. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my video is where I randomly select which movie I'm gonna be watching next. So let's take a look. What lies beneath? What does lie beneath? Can anyone tell me? I believe I picked this movie up during Halloween one year because it was in a Halloween bin of films, and this was one that I had never seen before, and I still haven't seen it. I'm just an impulse buyer when it comes to movies, and if they're on good deals and they're very cheap, I just go ahead and do it. I don't even know who is in this movie. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is in this movie? I don't... There, there's a bathtub, because I remember the cover, and there's a hand on a bathtub. I don't know. It's It was bought around Halloween, so it should be scary. And we'll check it out next time. So guys, if you've seen Brighton Rock, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you on the next time I'm releasing the next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of What Lies Beneath. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.